let's jump into problem 12.6a, a constrained resource problem. Uh, a very nice problem to have. Your customers are have more demand than you have supply. And so it says, well, constrained resource says, well, let's narrow our focus to whatever resource is being constrained here. In this question, it's time, but we're saying, not necessarily what product is most profitable for us, but what product uses our constrained resource most efficiently? That is the question we seek to answer here. Here we go. Anthony Bertuzzi is a very busy man. He runs an event planning business that organizes weddings, birthday parties, and corporate events. Anthony's business is so busy that he is recently starting turning, started turning away customers. Anthony tried to bring in a partner, but customers wanted Anthony's magic touch. Anthony enjoys all three types of events, weddings, birthdays, birthday parties, and corporate events equally, and would like your help in determining which events he should prioritize. Although all events are different, he has laid out the following information about a typical event of each type. So here's a typical wedding, a typical birthday party, a typical corporate event. It says typically weddings take 40 planning hours, birthday parties take 16 planning hours, and corporate events take 20 planning hours. So all we want to know here is which event uses his his time, his planning hours most efficiently. And basically we don't want to know the profit because obviously if, if all else equal, you'd rather make 4,000 than three than one, right? Like all else being equal, but all else is not equal. One of these takes more time. One takes less. So let's sort of evaluate based on how much money we're making per hour, not how much money we're making 4,000, 1,000, 3,000, but how much we're making per planning hour. And you simply divide by your constrained resources. If you go on and do 12.6b, our constrained resource isn't somebody's time, it's number of grams of uh, some supply that goes in the product. And you go, okay, well, what's our contribution margin per gram? In this case, our constrained resource is Anthony's hours. So we're gonna divide by the number of hours, divide by planning hours. How long is this taking him? And if he enjoys them all, Equally, as he's saying, he should be prioritizing one over the other. So let's let's divide by the hours. So divide it by 40 hours for uh, weddings, divide by, uh, what is it, 16 hours for parties, and divide by 20 hours for corporate events. And the picture becomes clear here. 4,000 divided by 40 is $100 per hour is what he's making off weddings, a thousand divided by 16, $62.50 is what he's making. Uh, and no, that's not what he's charging, but that's what he's making after all his costs are considered. 62.50 per planning hour and 3000 divided by 20 is $150 an hour for corporate events. So if he's being honest about this and if he enjoys them all equally, he should be taking corporate business first. That should be one, two, three. Now he always has the option to change his prices, right? Like maybe he's just priced to what the market will bear, but he could raise prices on birthday parties or raise prices on weddings to make them more attractive or drop prices on corporate events to make them less attractive, I suppose. But if he's got unlimited demand for his time, corporate events is what he should take first. Uh, so there you go. First, second, third, we've ranked them. It says, assume Anthony has 1,600 available planning hours per year. So 1,600 a year, hours a year, he wants to be doing this type of work. And obviously there's other work to be done. Um, how much money will he make, assuming he specializes exclusively on weddings, birthday parties, or corporate events? Well, let's figure out if he has 1,600 hours and if he only did weddings, how many weddings could he do? Well, the math is pretty straightforward. You say oh, he's got 1,600 hours, weddings take 40 hours, he could do 40 weddings, 1,600 divided by 40. So if he does 40 weddings, so I guess we'll do capacity. And it's uh, weddings, birthday, B-day, <laughs> and corporate so if he only does weddings he could do 40 weddings if he only does birthday parties they take 16 hours each and he's got 1600 hours he could do 100 birthdays right again uh 
he has 1600 available hours birthdays take 16 hours uh he has 1600 hours and corporate events take 20 hour uh, 20 hours so he could do 80 corporate events uh cm per event cm per unit here is uh Weddings make him $4,000 in contribution margin. Birthdays make him $1,000 in contribution margin. And corp events make him $3,000 in contribution margin. So if he has the capacity to do 40 weddings, he does 40 weddings, he makes four grand an event, he's going to make $160,000. That's how much money he makes. That's his total contribution margin. You know, he's got fixed costs to worry about after this. Uh, if he only does birthdays, he makes $100,000 in contribution margin. And if he does corporate events he makes two hundred and forty thousand dollars in contribution margin so this is a different way of answering the same question sometimes we work through the first part and students aren't quite clear on like 150 bucks an hour why are corporate events better well this way is another way of looking at it which is if he has a limited amount of time 1600 hours and unlimited demand you know if he used all of his time for corporate events he'd make 240 if you use all his time for weddings he'd make 160 if you use all his time for birthdays he'd make 100 clearly corporate events are the ones making him more money if all else is equal he should focus on those and you should focus on hitting the like or subscribe button thanks for being here Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. The next video in our series is right up here, and if you want a supercut of all of the videos in this series, that's the one down below.